How to configure span and R span on a Cisco switch, the micro nugget. Every switch out of the box isolates devices into their own collision domains. That means those devices can only see traffic that's sent to and from them, as well as some broadcast traffic. That's the way it should be. But oftentimes, as a network administrator, we want eyes into the network to be able to see what's really going on there. So we can then take that output and pipe it to a monitoring workstation running a tool like Wireshark. So in order to do that, Cisco allows us to configure span sessions, switch port analyzer sessions. We designate a group of source ports and we say I want to send those out to this destination port and then we open up Wireshark and do our monitoring. So to show that I've got a Cisco 3550 switch. I'm going to go into global config mode and type in monitor session followed by a session number. Now this switch happens to support a maximum of two sessions at the same time. That's monitoring sessions. As you get into bigger switches they'll usually support more sessions at once. But I'm going to say monitor session one. I'm going to watch from the source interface. Uh, we'll do stu fast ethernet zero slash let's say 12, uh, and it, from there you can specify a range of interstate, like maybe through, you know, 20 or something like that, um, and you will sometimes run into hardware limitations like, oh, well, this platform can only support this many ports monitored at the same time, and then you get to specify what direction the traffic is going in. Is it being received, uh, sent, transmitted, or both? If you don't specify and just hit the enter key, it's going to default to both, which is what I want in this case. I'm then going to do monitor session one, destination. See, we're grouping these things into their own monitor session. I'm going to say, I'm going to send this out interface fast ethernet zero slash one, and I'm done. Now, anything that's sent or received on port 12 will automatically be piped out to my computer. So span is great when you're monitoring stuff on the same switch, but what happens when you want to monitor something on a remote switch? <gasps> Does that mean I have to unplug my device, walk down the hallway and plug it in here? We know that's against all CISO mantra. We sit in our chairs as Cisco technicians, and that's why they created our span. Remote span allows you to create a designated VLAN. I'll just say 9999, right? Just just make make one up, uh, just something that you're not using, and you flag that as an R span VLAN. Then you can trunk that VLAN down to this top switch and receive it here. Let me let me show you how this works. So this is CBT switch two. I've plugged into CBT switch one down here. First things first, I'm going to go into global config VLAN 999. Just make sure it's not in use, right? Any VLAN will do. And I'll do uh, remote span to tell it this is not user traffic. This is used for remote span. Then I start configuring my monitor session as I did before. So uh, let's say on this switch, I wanted monitor session one and we'll focus in. I want to uh, do the source interface, fast ethernet zero slash, we'll just do 10, right? So we're, we're assuming that source computer is plugged into 10, and we'll monitor both directions of traffic. And I'm going to say the monitor session one destination, now instead of an interface, I'm going to say destination remote. And notice it's going to say, oh, what VLAN did you, did you designate as your R span VLAN? So we'll say VLAN 999. By the way, if you have trunks that limit what VLANs are on there, you'll definitely have to add 999 to your trunk right there. Now, we're also going to see a here, this is a Cisco 3550, which has a hardware limitation. So they came up with this idea of a reflector port. Essentially, the chassis itself on a 3550 doesn't have the, the juice, the horsepower to be able to do R span. So they sacrifice one of your other ports. They call it a reflector port. All it is, is a port that hopefully you're not using because you're going to take it down when you do this, uh, that, that gives up it's ASIC resources. So uh, think of it like this. This computer's being monitored, right? You're watching this computer. It's capturing the data and piping it out this quote unquote reflector port. Now it's not actually going out that port. It's just sacrificing its re resources, looping it back into the switch and then sending it out in the other direction. You'll find a couple Cisco switches that ha have that hardware, third, uh, blah, 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 hardware limitation. Uh, the the 3550 is one of them. And of course, now I've right clicked and destroyed everything. Hold on. Okay, got my command back. So when I type in the reflector port, I just want to make sure that I use an interface that's not being in use. It can be anything. It doesn't even have to have something plugged into it. I'll just say slash 20, right? So now I've configured my remote VLAN monitoring on this switch. Now I just go back to my original switch which is right here, and I configure it to receive that information. So I'm going to create the same VLAN here, 999, remote span. If I, ha I need to add it to the trunk, uh, I can do that. Or if you allow all VLANs, your work is done. Now I'm going to do kind of the receiving side of the config. Monitor session, let's create session two this time. And we'll say the source is going to be remote VLAN, not just VLAN. VLAN would be a VLAN on the local switch. I'm going to say the remote VLAN, uh, 999. 
right? So we're going to receive it on there, and then I just say monitor destination. Nope, sorry, monitor session two. There we go, destination. And we do interface, and whichever interface we want to pipe it out. Again, our monitoring workstation. We'll say fast Ethernet 0 slash 5, if that's where our monitoring workstation is in. Now I've configured it to receive this remote information on VLAN 99, 9999. Nine, nine. and pipe it out to the monitoring workstation on fast ethernet 0 slash 5. Now we can stay in our chairs and eat our Twinkies. Wait a sec. Hostess has gone out of business. There are no Twinkies anymore. How will our children ever know? I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing. <laughs>